Houston Dynamo fans, you already know what time it is. It's time for Kicking It, brought to you by Kroger. My name is Dorian Valenzuela, and this is the place where we get to know our players just a little bit better. And as always, we do it in two parts. The first one is called First Kick. That's where we take a deep dive into their lives on and off the field. And the second is called Extra Time. And that is very simple. It is a free for all. All subjects are up for grabs. Anything is on the table. Today's guest is one that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. The hometown kid. Today, we are kicking it with Juan Castilla. Juan, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And first and foremost, it's, it's a pleasure for me and for a lot of us to hear from you. Obviously, having a background as a fan of the team, it runs in the family and you've been exposed to, to this club for a very, very, very long time. So let's let's start there at home, right? Um, with your father, who is very involved. Talk to me a little bit about that and, and what it was like for you to, to grow up under him and, and around the club. Uh, yeah, so my dad uh, came from a uh, came from Colombia, where he played soccer growing up. Obviously, it's a very it's a culture that uh, soccer is soccer is everything. So. Um, I was I lived there for about four years and I moved to the U.S. and I came along with that culture and it was always in the household. Um, my dad made sure that as soon as I was old enough, he put me in the soccer team and obviously him becoming a coach, the soccer just became an everyday thing. Um, something I can talk to about with him, something that I do in the afternoons and it was just really important for me to have him as someone who can guide me. Um, I felt that in times where I was a bit confused or I wasn't sure what was the better choice, he was always there to talk to me. And my mom uh, sacrificed a lot. Um, she took me to training every day. And I was just had a really good support system at home. Um, they knew what I wanted and they were willing to do anything to help me reach my goals. That your father, you know, does coach for in, in the academies and stuff like that. Was that an extra? I don't want to say motivation, but was that a, a, an extra incentive to make sure that you took your game to the highest level for your father? Um, yeah, I mean, he pushed me a lot. Uh, I feel like I had a, enough discipline in myself, but the days that were tough and the days where I didn't want to do the work, he was always there to give me that extra push, just motivate me and making sure that I was always in the right pathway. Um, so, yeah, I think he is a big motivation. He is a big part of it. Um, he always taught me that I had to work hard and that's what's gonna take you far. So from a young age, he established that. So over time, I've been able to work hard and stay disciplined. So I think that at the end of the day, that's, that's really important, especially transitioning to the professional level because it's all about being disciplined with your body, with the things you do off the field, and as well as how you carry yourself on the field. I think this is kind of like the most important part of, of me getting to chat with you, because in reality, for every every young kid, you know, teenager in, in Houston that follows your career, they'll be able to see kind of what their dreams look like if you work hard and if you kind of put your mind into everything that, that, that you do. So I want to start at the beginning. Talk to me about that kid at the time that, you know, was at Robertson Stadium, that was exposed to the club. How was that experience for you at the very beginning of it all? When you were just a fan. How was that for you? Talk to me about those days. No, it was it was super cool to go see uh, Dynamo at the Robertson Stadium. Or, and even when they opened up the new stadium, like just being there from the start and seeing how the club has grown and now being a part of it is something really special to me. Um, I would go to those games very often. And I remember when I was part of the academy, just being a ball kid, like watching Mauro when he was like 20 years old. And then he becomes one of like the best players that have played here. So like being able to see that and grow with the club and now be able to be part of it and try to make it better is, is really cool. And I think that it's like a motivation for me to keep pushing, to make a big impact in this club. 
I think it's amazing that when people hear your story and they see this this chat, so to speak, they'll think, "Wow, you know, I was I'm, I was that little kid too. I am that player that is aspiring to be a professional." And here he is, you know, a professional player from this city that you know has made that dream come true. But I think in in, in the interest of fair in the interest of fairness, one we need to tell them the full story. You went through Spain. You were in Columbus, where you actually ran into familiar face in Rico. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that, because the journey is just as important as the destination. Yeah, no, I think I have a pretty unique journey. Um, I started the academy when I was seven years old. Uh, it was the pre-academy at the time. And then I played here up until I was 12. And um, my family and I made the decision that um, going overseas to Spain would be something for me to learn from and grow from. And it would be a really good experience for my development. Um, so we made that decision to send me away and obviously it was tough and I missed home a lot. But now that I look back, I don't regret it at all. It was, it was something that uh, gave me maturity and gave me a different perspective of soccer, especially in a country where soccer is very competitive. Um, and then I was there for two years, came back to Ohio, Columbus, where I played for the Columbus Crew Academy for a year. And that was an also a very eye-opening uh, experience. You know, I get to see a different type of culture in an MLS club, a different play style. Obviously at the time, Greg Berhalter was the head coach. So it was really important for him that the academy teams played uh, the same style that he wanted to play. So I learned a lot from that team. I got my first national team call up being in Columbus. And eventually at 15, uh, the Dynamo Academy coaches sat down with my dad and basically said to bring me back and there's a path for me here. And I felt very happy at the time that I was gonna be able to go back home and also to see the clear path, to see the, the way the club has changed. And I really saw an opportunity and thanks to God, everything worked out. And now I'm, I'm here and I'm enjoying every single day. Talk to me about that first time you pick up the phone, they pick up the phone and they tell you uh, that you're going to be training with the first team, right? Because that's, that's an important call-up. And then also, what it was like for you last season to be with the first team under tap and, and the kind of responsibility that that, that, that was for you, getting, getting that call-up. Yeah. No, it was, it was super, super exciting. I remember I went, they told me at training, and uh, I came back home. I told my parents straight away. And obviously, they were excited for me. And then just being at the training with all these players that I've seen growing up, you know, I have a picture with like Boney when I was like 10 years old at the training field, like he's signing a shirt. Um, so that's something to be on the field with him now. It was, it was kind of uh, crazy to me, but um, obviously over time I got more comfortable and I, I was able to really uh, fit in with the group and I felt confident in myself. And uh, I got called into the 2020 preseason and that's when I really got the full experience where I was training with them consistently and uh, I saw their preseason games. I saw the way that they prepared for matches, just basically everything. And it was a really good learning experience. And then last year, uh, being in and out with the academy and the first team, I had periods of time where I was with the first team for a good amount of, of weeks and months. and mid-season which is a different and different environment you know a different mentality than preseason. so it was good to see how um, you prepare for the season and now when you're actually in the season how they how they go about their business and it was it was really good to see that especially last year so going into this year i kind of knew all the things everything how everything worked and how what the expectations were for from everybody if this, if this was a movie, if your life was a movie, right? Everything that you've told me, um, 
it would be so crazy only because of the fact that you've mentioned that you know you you were a fan of the club that you saw Mauro when he was younger that you have pictures with you know with Boney um and now you're training with him all of this kind of put together if this was a movie is making you a better player a better mentor down the line for the next generation so i guess where i'm getting at is is there anybody in the locker room right now in this moment that you would consider a mentor that's taking you under their wing and, and and how important is it to get this experience and get this guidance from from people that have done it for so long no uh i don't think it's one person in particular um you know i am really close with the young guys but when i learn is when i watch players like joe corona or darwin matias players that play more of my position and i get to watch them in training every single day i think that's where more of the learning happens where i see how they how they check their shoulders uh, the weight of their passes the speed of their play like just all those things that i get to see on the daily basis and compete against is what's really helping my development um i think a player that i could say is uh, alejandro von mayor he's not really my position or anything but he's definitely a player that from the start uh, really welcomed me and talked to me and i mean he's hispanic so am i so we were able to talk about things and you know he's always he's always pushing me he knows he knows how good i can be so he always makes sure that i'm always pushing myself to the best level i can be at so he's definitely someone that i would say has has played a big role in making me feel comfortable and also pushing me I got to tell you man just hearing you talk it, it it's it's really rewarding for me because I've been a fan of of the club for a very long time myself and 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 now having the opportunity to see your career kind of flourish it, it it's really cool because I've always said it you know that Houston has a lot to offer and you're proving that so thank you so thank you so much for sharing that with me and now we're moving into this next part it's called extra time and it's just a little bit of fun and we're going to get to talk about who you are off the field right what do you like to do for fun for example what are your favorite movies tv shows maybe music talk to me a little bit about that uh i think off the field i i definitely play fifa a lot probably oh, yeah. more than, um I, i'm still in high school so i have to do online classes which is a pain but you know i have to get the education um hang out with my friends you know i have a girlfriend so i hang out with her a lot um and i think it's good to have things that you know take you away from soccer um soccer has become such a big part of my life and something that i do that i have to really give it my all so i think it's good to have things like fifa friends um my girlfriend and just family in general where i can just take a step away and take a mental break and get away from all those things so then next day i'm feel back up and i can do what i do again you know yeah you said fifa so i have to ask you are you an ultimate team kind of guy yes for sure I, how I, high did you get for for those of you that are watching that don't play ultimate team by the way the grind is real the uh, grind. you get to qualify you get to qualify for weekend league you have a next number of games that you have to play and then you get ranked with the best of the best so with that being said what is your rank week to week okay last fifa i was more of a division 2 player i'm not going to lie <laughs> but this fifa is different this fifa is only 20 games for a weekend league so i'm definitely going to have to grind out to qualify for this foot champs and you know it's 20 games i think i'm i'm going to be pretty solid i started a bit late last fifa so this this fifa i'm i'm all caught up i think i have a pretty solid team so i'm i'm pushing for division 1 favorite card in the game and I'll let you go. Favorite card in the game. If you had to build your team around one card, which oh, one like is it? Card that I have or like any card? Any card. Bro, Ronaldo, he's, he's just OP. Like he's <laughs> fast, he's strong, like his finishing is insane. Uh both feet, like yeah. Ronaldo, easy. I look forward to getting my uh team of the year Juan Castilla getting to play against an icon Ronaldo down the line I'll tell you that right now. I bought myself on FIFA the other day. 52 good, good. rate. Not, not the best but you know it's nice to nice to yeah, have him in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for for joining us and for chatting with us and of course we look forward to seeing where where the career takes you next.
Yeah, no, thank you. I really enjoyed it.